what's going on adventurers vulcan here and today we're talking about the guardian build but before we get into that i did want to say thank you to everyone for all of the support the get well soon wishes and everything that just it meant the world to me um it's been a rough week and uh perfect timing too right with new world coming out but that is the side effect of having a baby in daycare so um, they don't tell you that when you uh, become a parent, that you're going to be getting sick a lot if your kiddo goes to daycare. Anyway, I wanted to say thank you, but let's go ahead and let's get back into the video. So the purpose of this build is to provide a well-rounded tanking spec. And this is going to make it easy for new players to get into the hang of running dungeons and holding aggro in New World. Because in this game, you don't have the same methods of tanking in games like World of Warcraft, for instance. Instead, you have to slot a Carnelian gem in order to activate your taunt. Otherwise, the mobs and bosses will be running all over the place and you won't really be a tank. And because you slot a Carnelian gem, certain skills will have the ability to taunt and be able to control enemies. So it's very important to know which ones you should take. Now, just because this build is aimed at newer players doesn't mean it's not viable in endgame. You can take this setup all the way to max level, you'll be just fine. Just continue to apply the principles that we cover here, and you'll be able to handle anything the game throws at you. So let's go ahead and get started with the weapons and the skill trees. So for this build, we're going to take the sword and shield as our first weapon, because no other weapon gives as many defensive buffs and tanking-focused passives as this one. Then our second weapon is going to be the Warhammer. Now I know some people are really big on the Great Axe and the Hatchet, and that's fine, but to me the Warhammer has better AoE taunts, and has a passive that restores health when you deal damage with a Warhammer ability. Now the Great Axe does have Gravity Well and Maelstrom, but for me, the Warhammer edged it out with that self-healing. So let's go ahead and break down the Sword Tree first. Now most of our points will be on the Defender side, but we do have a few nodes to pick up on Swordmaster that will help us out. Now you can take these in any order as you level up. My only recommendation is that I would try to pick up the three skills first, and then go back and fill in the passive nodes. So our first skill is the Reverse Stab. Now this ability will deal damage to all enemies in front of you. Now I know what you're thinking, so why are we taking this skill instead of a Defender skill? Well, let me break this down. We're going to go down this tree and we're going to grab Tactician, which is a passive node attached to Reverse Stab. Tactician reduces our cooldowns by 25% for each enemy hit. This means if we have a group of enemies that we're tanking, we can use Reverse Stab and immediately pull our Shield Bash and our Defiant Stance off of cooldown. And I mean immediately, like you use it and their 25 second cooldown, gone, as long as there's enough enemies, right? And because this is also a sword skill, this pulls itself off of cooldown as well. And you can do this over and over and over. And this plays really well with Defiant Stance because it has a passive node called Restoration. And this is going to grant you 15% health when Defiant Stance ends. So you're looking at a really reliable source of self-healing, as well as being able to pull your Shield Bash, which is your AoE taunt, off of cooldown. Now, I know I alluded to it a little bit, but our next skill is Shield Bash. So this is our first Taunt Gym skill, and it's going to deal damage plus stun any enemies in front of you. This is the one you want to use to maintain threat on targets, especially bosses. Then our last skill is Defiant Stance. Now this skill does have a little bit of a wind up. Your character will kind of smack their weapon on their shield. So you are locked into that animation. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it does look cool, I guess. Now this one is going to reduce incoming base damage by 30%, which is just huge. You can't pass on that. This skill also AOE taunts, so keep that in mind. And you can go back and forth between Shield Bash and Defiant Stance to maintain threat on enemies. So now that we've covered our main skills, let's talk about the supporting passives. So the Defender Tree has a ton of nodes that are going to improve your blocking by reducing the stamina damage from certain damage types, or giving you more armor and a fortify buff on your block. These are going to be hugely impactful going forward since they're all upside. You don't lose anything, but you gain additional beefiness. Now next up, we want to take one with the shield. This causes your blocks to reduce shield cooldowns. Then we have a passive for our skill, Shield Bash. Now this one for Shield Bash is called Intimidating Bash, which causes that skill to generate more threat and deal more damage. Next up we have Invigorating Bulwark, which is a passive node that gives you stamina when you hit a target with Shield Rush or Shield Bash. 
Then we have Recuperation, which increases all incoming healing and regeneration by 10%. And then lastly, let's talk about our final three passives, two of which are tied to Defiant Stance. One, you have Final Countdown, which gives more damage reduction if you're above 50% health with Defiant Stance. Then we have Restoration. This is what we talked about a little bit earlier. This gives you a 15% heal of your max health when Defiant Stance ends. So both of these are going to be super good for survivability and that big burst of self-healing. Now the last passive is called Defensive Formation, and this one is just crazy. So while you're blocking, you're going to reduce the damage to allies within 2 meters of you by 30%. Now for melee players and healers, this is going to be crazy. It's going to make their life so much easier because you're going to be reducing so much of their incoming damage. So positioning here is critical. Make sure to keep a tally on who is near you and who you can help protect without pulling a boss into the middle of a group and wiping the whole party. So you don't want to put any risk in the party, but at the same time, you want to make sure your positioning is correct. Now let's go ahead and move over into the Swordmaster tree. We're going to take some passives over here. So we have Achilles Heal, which causes the final attack of your light attack chain to slow the enemy. Then we're going to take Unstoppable Stab, which is off of our Reverse Stab skill. This adds grit to your Reverse Stab so you can't be interrupted. Then we have Opportunist, which increases your damage done to slowed targets. And lastly, we have Tactician. This is the one for the amazing cooldown passive. 25% cooldown reduction for each enemy hit. Now, it doesn't say that, but through testing, that's exactly what is happening. So, not sure if it's a bug or if it's the way it's designed, but that's what we're looking at right now. So, we're going to go ahead and use it. So let's go ahead and move into Warhammer. So like the sword, these can be taken in any order, but I would go with the skills first. Our first skill is Clear Out. This is a frontal cleave. It's going to deal damage and push enemies away from you. Not overly ideal for tanking, but it does help to create some space if you're backed into a corner. Then our second skill is Shockwave. This is going to be our moneymaker when it comes to AoE taunts. So this is going to create a large AoE around the tank. It's going to deal damage and stun enemies for two seconds. This is also a taunt skill, meaning that it's going to cause a 6 second taunt to all enemies that it hits. And this is exactly why I went with Warhammer over Great Axe, because something like this allows you to neatly group up enemies, and it's just too good to pass on, right? It's just too reliable and too consistent to put in the back burner. And our third skill is Path of Destiny. This is a linear attack that's going to deal damage to anything in front of the tank. And this one also has some cool passives that will also stagger and reduce cooldowns for Warhammer abilities. Okay, so let's move into the passives for these trees. So first up, we're going to take the Crowd Crusher tree. Now we're going to take I Can Do This All Day to reduce your stamina consumption while you block using the Warhammer. Then we want to take Outnumbered, a node that's going to give us a 10% damage absorption if we're surrounded by two or more enemies. Then as we move down the tree, we want to pick up Acceleration to help reduce Warhammer cooldowns whenever we hit enemies with a light attack and they have a debuff on them. Then we want to take Power Cleaner for our clear out skill. This is going to give you Fortify to yourself and the team. Next up we have Frailty, which grants Shockwave the weakened debuff, which is going to cause any enemies hit with Shockwave to deal less damage, which is always ideal for tanking. Next up you want to pick up Facilitation Expedition. This is going to give you a haste buff if you hit a target with an active debuff, Movement speed is always good, especially when tanking, if you need to go from point A to point B rather quickly. Now next up, we have one of the most important nodes to take, and that's Prevailing Spirit. So this is going to cause you to regain 35% of your damage dealt with any Crowd Crusher skill back as health, making this a great way to regain some health if your healer goes down, or just a passive side revenue of health. Now make sure you also pick up Meteoric Crater, clean and refreshed and seismic waves to help improve those skills. Now on the last line we have resurgence which reduces your debuffs if you land two light attacks. Then we have swing away which is going to grant haste on clear out and then lastly stimulated reduction which reduces cooldowns by 5% for each enemy hit with path of destiny. Now the very last note we take here is aftershock which causes a large slow on enemies. So that's the whole Crowd Crusher tree. Let's talk about the Juggernaut since we have a couple nodes we want to pick up over there. One, the Epitome of Bonk, which increases your armor penetration for all Warhammer attacks. And then we have Exhaustive Attacks, which is going to cause all of your Warhammer abilities to apply Exhaust, which slows the target's stamina regeneration, which is always useful. 
So now that we've covered skills and trees, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about attributes, which should be pretty quick. So basically, we're going to put everything into constitution. I mean, you want at least 200 in there for the armor buff. Beyond that, you can kind of massage some points into strength if you want some more damage, but you definitely want to prioritize constitution first. More health is always better. So really, it's very simple when it comes to tanking. You don't have to split up anything or hit certain thresholds outside of that 200 for constitution. So let's move into gear and what we need to look for. So first off, we do want heavy armor. We want those crowd control effect duration buffs. We want the increased protections from heavy gear. That makes the most sense. But when it comes to what type of armor we want to look for, make sure to equip items that are of the knight or of the barbarian for increases to constitution and strength. This is going to help meet those attribute thresholds a little bit faster and allow you to move some points around if you need to. So what are some perks that you should be looking for on your weapons and gear? Well, the ones that I would recommend are Mortal Lifesteal. This is going to give you a percentage of your health back on kill. Then you have Regular Lifesteal, which is going to give you health percentage back on damage done. You have Sturdy, which is going to cause you to take less stamina damage so you can block for a longer period of time. Accelerated Defiant Stance, so you can move faster while you're in Defiant Stance. And then Refreshing Ward, which is going to help reduce cooldowns when you're hit five times. So all of these are going to kind of help round out this build and make things operate a little bit smoother for you. Now I would definitely prioritize anything that's self-healing like lifesteal or leeching and then take on the utility stuff like the movement speed or reducing cooldowns last. So this time around I wanted to give some examples of legendary items that would work well with this build. Now I know some people are out there farming and trying to get their best in slot items so here are some things that you can go out there and chase. For legendary swords we have the Pitlord Dominator. You can get this from Pitlord Dehi in Shattered Mountain. You have Lane's Lament and Alcazor. They're both world drops from elite chests. So keep an eye out for those. Then for a legendary shield, we have Compulsion. We're not sure where this drops yet, but it is out there. I think it's a world drop. And then we have other notable legendaries like Ill-Gotten Gain, which is a perfect tank earring. It has health regen, potion perks. It's just top notch. You can get this from Foreman Herald in Eden Grove. So we've covered the majority of the build, but there's one last thing we need to talk about, and that is gems. So what gems should you slot in this build? Well, we talked about in the very beginning, for any tanking build to work, you have to have a Carnelian gem slotted into your weapon. This activates your taunts, it allows you to actually tank and hold aggro. But when it comes to your armor, this is where you can have a little bit of flexibility. So you can drop in things like slash protection, elemental protection, physical protection, it's really whatever you want to put in there. It's whatever you're weak against, right? Round out those protections. That way you don't have a huge kind of gaping hole in your defenses because that's going to be bad for any situation. So make sure to round those out. Slot in the gems you need to. That way you have everything covered. And that's really it, guys. I mean, it's whatever you want to put in there to fit whatever content you want to do. So like I said, a lot of flexibility for the armor gems. So folks, that wraps this one up. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and what type of tank build do you like to use? Thank you all so much for all the support, for the best wishes, for the get well soon wishes. I really appreciate it. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time.